Welcome to the Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, Live the Big Stuff podcast with New York Times bestselling author, Christine Carlson. Chris shares don't sweat wisdom to help you achieve greater mental health, self-compassion, and better communication with family, friends, and coworkers. Listen in and learn simple ways to live your most vibrant life of joy. Well, I'm very excited to share with you a wonderful um, other podcaster, author, doctor that I came across, Dr. Kevin Reese. He has helped thousands of people reclaim their health through his books, seminars, and programs since 2010. And he's recently released his sixth book entitled Peace Over Pain, How to Eliminate Chronic Pain and Our Illness So You Can Break Free from the medical monopoly. Welcome, Kevin. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so I I was really excited to speak with you. And because I'm doing this podcast series called Mindset Matters, and I really thought that this whole concept of peace over pain was just um, going to be so valuable for people to hear as far as in talking about, you know, what does it take to create peace over pain? And what does it take Mm. to create a healthy mindset? But first, let's talk about your story. Like, how did you come to this work? How did you, how did you discover this whole process of peace over pain in your own life? I think like most holistic practitioners, you got to experience the pain yourself first. (laughs) Best and educator. So, yeah. So I spent my 20s, I was a I was a radio and television personality in the hip hop genre. And you know, a lot of late nights and fast food and chasing the the brass ring. You know, I ended up with a heart attack scare when I was 28 years old. So I went through the medical system trying to find answers and I realized that I needed to help myself. They didn't have answers. They just wanted to treat the symptoms. So um, I changed my lifestyle and I got my health in order. And again, like most holistic practitioners, you become passionate about it. So I went back to school and I became a health coach. And while I was on the radio, I was helping people. I had clients on the side. And after I started getting results, I became more passionate. And I'm like, you know what? I want to switch careers. So I switched careers and shocked everyone. I mean, I even quit on the air. It's on YouTube somewhere. And, And I did that and got tremendous results for 10 years. Even went and got the PhD and in nutrition and help people with migraines, irritable bowel syndrome, sciatica. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. And then fast forward 10 years, when I was in my late 30s, I started getting physical pain, costochondritis, carpal tunnel syndrome, my knees hurt, my back hurt, because, you know, I'm a tenacious computer athlete, all these years on the computer, tearing my body up, you know, computer life is more unnatural than playing football. So we mess ourselves up. And again, I, I went to the chiropractors, the, mas- the masseuses, the osteopaths, I went to my primary care physician, they sent me for more heart tests because I couldn't understand that it was musculoskeletal. They're like, oh, we got to check your heart. I'm like, my heart is fine. But then I found postural therapy and I went back to school again at 40 years old because I was like, I need to learn this because it got me out of pain in three weeks. Wow. Can you, I mean, let's just stop there for a moment because that's something I've never heard of and I've heard of a lot of things, but I've never um, heard of postural therapy. Yeah. It's amazing. (laughs) So uh, what it is, is it's a prescribed protocol of corrective exercises. And what we do is we give clients those exercises 
based off of photos. It's what I call in my book, P-rays. Instead of X-rays, it's P-rays. So it requires the client to get a little vulnerable, you know, because we got to see your joints. So, you know, for men, you know, shirt off. For women, either a sports bra or a tank top at best and shorts or spandex. And so we can see the joints and the bones with our trained eyes through the photos. And then we can see what's going on with the alignment. And then that's when we create a protocol of corrective exercises and the client does them for two weeks. And then we take more photos and you can see the changes in the photos, not to mention feel them. And then the client gets more excited because it's like, wow, things are really changing. And it just, the transition happens and you have the photos to see. So do you think that some of that is, so what you're trying to do is create exercises that are kind of um, counter, like counter to the movements that the person is doing on a day-to-day basis to create these imbalances in their posture and in their alignment? Yeah, because muscles move bones. Yeah. So we use the bones and the joints as a gauge, but the root cause is mus- muscle dysfunction. So, for example, if you see someone that's kind of hunched over, uh, that's usually because their chest muscles are too tight and their back muscles are too weak. So they're being pulled. So their spine and their cervical, their thoracic and their cervical spine, they're just going for the ride, you know? So we can actually create protocols to correct this and and get that person, you know, back and back to straightening. What happens is a lot of people, they go for strength first. They go to the gym or even yoga to some extent. What you're doing is, is you're strengthening. But what we do is we straighten first. Mm. Then you can strengthen because if you strengthen first, (laughs) you're going to get stuck because the the muscles have a a, a memory, muscle memory, you'll get locked in place. We see this with older folks all the time. My dad all the time like this, like dad, we got to work on it, you know, because he's down like this. He's the back is all right. You don't want to, you don't want to live like the hunchback in Notre Dame. You don't want that. And a lot of older folks are are walking around like that. And so we got to straighten. Yeah. um, Early in my husband's career, before he became a PhD in psychology, he was a rolfer. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, always the drawback with manipulating the muscle and the fascia and creating alignment that way, the drawback was that when the person returns to their other movements, the movements that created the misalignment, Mm -hmm. then the muscles just move back to the same position, you know, because you can move the the fascia and muscle, but, but you can't change the movement. So, but, but when you um, manipulate in this way with exercise, like, let's say, I mean, I would assume I'm just thinking about my own misalignments, like um, a lot of my, hunched over comes from my pelvis not being turned under properly, which then affects my low back yes. and my upper back too. And so when I, but when I get myself into alignment in the correct way, then it's kind of easy for my shoulders to fall back again and for right. my alignment to happen. So you're saying that by exercises specific for the, for that person, mm-hmm. you're looking at for the, the weaknesses um, where the body's overcompensating probably for those weaknesses. So you're strengthening the weaknesses and then, and then that way the person can be in alignment. And then I, I'd imagine because the energy systems of your body and everything works so well when you're in alignment and they just don't, I mean, I can, I just know my own neck pain. Like I get chronic neck pain sometimes and I just know it's because I'm out of alignment. <laughs> Well, yeah, I can see your shoulder disparity right now. Your right shoulder is higher than your left shoulder. Yeah. And that could be coming from your hip 
or it could be coming from the thoracic spine, either or. So what we do in, in my book, I, I describe postural therapy. The analogy is postural therapy is to your muscles what brushing your teeth is to your mouth. So we, as human beings, should be doing postural therapy every single day. 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the evening, 10 or 15 minutes. Doesn't take long at all. Because, and by the way, this is what Tom Brady does. This is why he's going to play until he's 75 years old. Wow. This is, we use our muscles every day. Even to use the bathroom, you're using your pelvic floor. Everything, you're, you're using your psoas muscle right now just to sit in that chair. So think about the abuse that your muscles go through just being a human being. Just like your teeth go through abuse every time you eat and drink, every single time. So you have to brush and you have to floss. And that's what we do with postural therapy. If someone has a bad misalignment, we can get that back in alignment. But even when the problem is fixed, you don't want to stop. You oh, no, you can't. Going. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you can't. It's got to be. And so here's where the mindset piece comes in. Mm. You know, so how talk about like what does a healthy mindset look like? And how did you shift? I mean, clearly, you know, we're very motivated when we get bad news, you know, like, we're very motivated when we get news that, wow, you could have heart condition. Um, I, I hear a lot of people shift that way. But but what about for the person who is experiencing chronic pain, but doesn't quite understand that it could also be a mindset issue? Yeah, the mind is like an onboard computer and it affects the body. There is a mind body connection. Oh, yeah, and to our emotions too. I mean, absolutely. Everything. Yeah, absolutely. You, and then and then the chakras on top of it. It's it's so layered. It's so complicated. Um, but the I pretty much took the mindset and made it into a brand because every day you have a choice, peace or pain. And so there it is right there. And so every single time you're upset or every single time you're faced with a challenge such as chronic pain or illness, you can actually ask yourself, peace or pain, it's my choice. Because even if you're in pain, you can still have peace. Somebody that's dying from the sea monster, as I call it, I try not to use the word because it's the scariest word in the human language. Even if someone has this sea monster and they're given three months to live, you can still have peace. In fact, some people gain their peace knowing that they're about to die because the pressure comes off. But that's the mindset. You're going to die anyway. So first, come to terms with that. Even if you're 30 years old, come to terms with that. And you know from your story, it can happen like that. Yeah. So I think that's the first mindset. That's the first challenge to understand your death. And then, okay, I have some control here. I can, I can eliminate my pain through a holistic practice such as I have in, in the Peace Over Pain book. And you can start making these changes in your diet and with postural therapy and with mindfulness training, you know, such as the meditation you did at the beginning. Things like this is what nourishes the body as a unit. And then once you start seeing some changes, all you need is a change or two. And your the mindset just kicks in. You know, it's no different than sports. You know, you don't think you can catch the ball. 
you drop it a million times and then you finally catch it. And it's like, oh, maybe I can do this. And then you catch the second one and the third one. So it's just a building up. Um, it's confidence. It's all it is, really. It's confidence. But getting over your death, <laughs> that's, that's probably the most important thing. I always say when somebody says they're afraid to die, I always think that they're probably what they're truly afraid of is that they're going to die before they really lived. Yeah, probably so. Probably so. You know, I mean, I deal with this with my dad. My dad is 70, about to be 76. He's not in great health. He's improved. He's done some of my advice, but he never goes all the way, you know? Just stuck in the habits. The habits just, you know, they say old habits die hard, they say, right? But he's feeling his mortality. And his whole life revolved around being a, a tradesman, a handyman, but he can't do it anymore. And he got forced out of his job because of his health. Your identity gets ripped away. This is how people end up in dark night of the soul. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can think like you're the healthiest person in the world and suddenly get news or you kind of start to fear that you're not. And then your identity is shattered because you're not, you're, you're so identified with being a healthy person. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And that's, that's what happened to me. I, you know, like I said, I had all these testimonials. I helped so many people. And then when I went into the physical pain, my emotional body, you know, my pain body started purging. See, I think your soul was just calling you to the next level for you. Like your soul mm -hmm. was saying, hey, you know what? You, you got more. There's more. There's more. Come on. <laughs> That's right. And I, I ended up in a dark night of the soul for seven months. Yeah, I bet. And so much came up. Traumas and so much crying. It was unbelievable, you know? Yeah. And you know, when you're crying every day, something's going on. Oh, yeah. Something's coming out. I always know? say any of that. I mean, all, every tear is worth a thousand words. You know, it's like oh, yeah. tears are just so healing. And yet we resist crying, you know, like we just. Especially we resist men. It. Yeah. I did too. Before my husband died, I, I would, I just couldn't cry. I couldn't make myself cry. I mm. wanted to. But I just, I couldn't make myself cry. And now, I mean, I, now I'm kind of back to that. I barely ever cry anymore. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, I, I totally broke open when I discovered Ho'oponopono. And oh, now and I love that. I love and that. Now I'm a practitioner of it. I got certified in it. And uh, now I'm able to open people up at a whole other level. Somebody comes to me for knee pain, <laughs> I'll open their whole world up. And no, oh, you got knee pain, but there's something going on. You know, you're holding on to something from, you know, your parents or, you know, your ex husband or wife or, or what have you. And, you know, so my work goes very deep. It's, it's more than just physical pain. Yeah. I mean, and uh, you're probably very familiar with TMS and like oh, yeah. that Dr. whole world. Sarno, Dr. Yeah, Sarno. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when um right before richard died he was struggling with low back pain and now he did have his x-rays showed that his lower spine was disintegrating mm -hmm. um but yeah. he but he was a big you know like he you know of course from his rolfing background and just all of what he knew about the emotional body and the physical body being so tied he was reading Dr. Sarno back then, you know, and, mm -hmm. and um, so I've just recently come across his work again from a dear friend who's been struggling with chronic pain. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, and I believe that like so much of our pain, our chronic pain is also brought on by those emotional stressors, you know, the deep emotional stressors that we don't acknowledge that we suppress, that we don't cry and we don't get angry, that we shove down, we respond in, um, to life from fear versus love. And then we end up in a real, you know, we can end up in a real mess. Yeah. I mentioned Dr. Sarno in the book. 
as well as Dr. Bernie Siegel, whose work is also important. I love him. Yeah, the, the, the his work is um, love and medicine. Mm-hmm. He has a podcast too, or is he still doing that? I wonder if he's still doing his podcast. He was doing. I just seen him a few weeks ago. Oh yeah, he, he lives in the same state as me, uh, but he's uh, I think he's ninety five. Oh my no, god! No, I'm sorry. He's eighty eight. He's eighty eight. Eighty eight. Yeah. No, he's yeah. ninety. I'm sorry. He's ninety. He's about to be ninety. So he's he's wearing down. He he yeah. even said that this might be his last time doing public speaking. Um, but yeah, his work is important. Dr. Sarnel is important. You know, um, it's all encompassed in Ho'oponopono. You know, and so can you just describe that because I know what it is, but just so our listeners know what that is. So the basis of it is that we're all running off of programming. And they use the word memory. I prefer programming because we are operating with a, this onboard computer on our shoulders, right? And so what it means is basically you're running off of a programming. And so <laughs> your programming and my programming, you know, they could hit it off or they could or they could not get along. Um, but and it, you know, it could be merging past lives have something to do with it as well. You don't need to know, but it's just interesting to know. And so you could be dealing with all this stuff in your pain body. And there's practices such as the mantra, which is, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. And I love you. These type of things help clean the program. It's very, yeah. tedi- it's very tedious. Like if you're on your game, you're doing it a hundred thousand times a day and you start cleansing. It's, it just, it's just things start cleansing and you start operating like for, just for, as an example, when the shootings happened just a few weeks ago here in America, the school shootings, you know, everybody's mad and they're this and they're that. And I, I don't, I don't feel any anger. And I actually take responsibility for it because my brother, my 17 or 18 year old brother is have is making mistakes based off his programming. And so this is kind of what Jesus was saying on the cross, forgive them father for they know not what they do. If you're running off of programming, it's really never your fault, even if you're a murderer. Because I I tell everyone, watch the movie The Joker. Society casted him away. and He became this apparent psychopath, but really he's free as a bird. And Batman is the one that's depressed. (laughs) The hero is the one that's depressed and hiding, right? He hides his identity, right? So Ho'oponopono is just a mindfulness technique that helps us cleanse ourselves and come to the understanding that your emotions and everything that happens to you is your responsibility. So I take responsibility for the shooter. It's, 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 it's a collective thing. Yeah. I mean, it it really brings me to the idea of like the shadow work and all of that, you know, that we can't have light without shadow and that we all have shadow. And it's, it's, it's really understanding at a very deep level that the collective and everyone in it is all just part of the one of everything. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, I love that. And I can never say it. Ho, ho, po, no, oh, no. <laughs> I nicknamed it H Po. Yeah, H Po. That's a better way to say it because I always mess it up on it. Ho, oh, po, no. <laughs> yeah. But it's, um, it's, it's, it's thank you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Yeah. And in, in pretty much any order you want. Okay. And what, which order did you say it in? I'm sorry, please forgive oh, me. Oh, I'm Thank sorry, you. please forgive you. Thank you. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, and, and there's there's more to it than that. 
what you can do is you use those phrases as a framework. So you create your own sentences based around those. There was a story and it was about the Hawaiian man who um, brought this, you know, this is like really his great work. Can you share that story about him? Because it's yeah. very profound. I remember he, he Dr. practiced, Hilan. yeah, he practiced this with prison inmates. Can you share yeah. that story? It's so powerful. And I think we'll probably end there. Um, and just with any other tips and tools you have for mindset. So, but I'd love to hear you tell that story. Sure. So Dr. Hugh Len, who was a PhD, uh, you know, shrink. <laughs> and he was hired to come into this criminal hospital. We're talking mentally insane, like the Joker. Okay. Uh, rapists, murderers, etc. And he didn't meet with any of them. He sat in his office or at home and he went through their folders. And every time he opened the folder, he did the whole Oponopono mantra as much as he could to see what's going on in him that triggers his brother or sister. And within five years, four or five years, the hospital closed down because they all got better. And they were all released back into society. And so he became famous from this. Um, and this is, this is what I'm talking about. This is my mindset is that, you know, piggybacking off Dr. Hugh Len, that we're responsible. You're responsible. If an ambulance goes by and I hear it, I'm responsible for whatever that emergency is. This is my reality. There's a reason why I'm hearing it. Mm. And, you know, I can't hear an ambulance and where you're at. But, you know, if it's driving by, you know, Hartford, Connecticut, I can hear it and I can clean whatever's in me that is provoking that situation because we're all connected. That's why they call it the collective. So yeah, Dr. Hugh Len is a, I consider a teacher of mine and uh, I definitely gave him a shout out in the book too. That's great. In your bio, you talk about how my listeners might get your book for free. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> how do they well, do that? Well, it's $20 on Amazon, but if, if you're okay with the audio and the ebook version plus a free training, then all you have to do is um, go to our Facebook group and we'll give it to you for free. You can download it, take it. And that is uh, peaceoverpain.com slash join the group. That's, That's wonderful. It. And your website is Dr. Reese. It's peaceoverpain.com. Oh, peaceoverpain.com. Okay, yeah. good. Peaceoverpain.com. Easy to remember. Well, I just want to thank you for the work that you're doing. Oh, I have one more question. Sure. So my, my dad is 90 and he's experiencing a lot of chronic back pain. Mm -hmm. um, can, you, can you help a 90-year-old who's basically using a walker due to chronic pain too? Absolutely. I, I see people get out of wheelchairs. Okay, I'm going to send them to you. <laughs> can, only, you, can you work over zoom yes everything's digital that's the i don't have to touch anyone oh that's great i'm gonna have him go through your training my clinic yeah. is completely virtual and the only thing i would just say is it's all about if the person's willing to do 15 in the morning 15 in the evening Oh yeah. He might laugh. He might say that he won't, he's not physically able, but if it's things that he can do, he'll do it. He's very disciplined. So oh, there's a lot you can do in a chair. Yeah, that's great. Okay. I'm, I'm going to definitely, um, his name's Ted and I'm going to send him to you. So, um, 90, that's, huh? that's a good run. That's a good run. Well, he's 89 and, um, he's gonna, he asked me, let's see, yesterday, my conversation with him. <laughs> was he was telling me how he's planning his memorial service. And he told me mm. that he um, wants, my brother is a singer. My brother does, he's like a choir director and he's got a beautiful voice. And 
my dad said he wants me to sing a duet with my brother at his memorial service. Wow. <laughs> and I haven't sang since high school. So I, I laughed really hard and I said, well, dad, for you, I'll do anything, but I, I'll, I'll even better it. If you make it to your 90th birthday, I promise to practice something with Brent and sing it to you at your 90th birthday. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> So even better, it would be great to um, see if we can get him more comfortable so that his quality of life goes up again, because then I think he might live till he's 100. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. If, if we take care of ourselves, and, and that's what I talk about in the book, it's a, it's a balance. 33% posture, 33% nutrition, 33% mindfulness. If you put all three together, man, it's endless. Yeah, I, I want to, I'll contact you too. I want to get my posture back in alignment too. So I hope you hear all this and I hope that our listeners um, have received a lot of really good information today. I sure have. And it's been great confirmation to me. Um, just brought a lot of my past together with my present and it's wonderful to meet you, Kevin. And thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for having me. All right, everyone, come back again. Don't sweat the small stuff. We are living the big stuff. This is Christine Carlson. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Don't Sweat the Small Stuff podcast with New York Times bestselling author and beloved teacher, Christine Carlson. Learn more about Christine's upcoming retreats, online courses, public speaking events, and more at christinecarlson.com and don'tsweat.com.